Hey guys, and welcome back to My Lilac Hill. Brittany here with you today. And if you caught my last video, I was talking all about how I plan to lay out my garden for 2023. And I thought I would bring you in to a little bit more detail on my process and how I kind of wrap my head around what I'm gonna be doing for the year. First thing that I do when I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna grow for the next year is I take an inventory of all of the seeds that I currently have in my collection. And that's what this is. What I basically did is I went through my food garden seeds, and this is all seeds that I had, and kind of in order of how old they were. So what needed to be used at first versus some of the newer seeds, if I didn't get to them, it was okay. But I wanted to make sure that some of these older seeds that I purchased in 2020 and 2021, that we're using those up so that we have the best germination rate possible. And so that's kind of where I start. I just get a general idea on what I have. And then I kind of think through, where are the gaps? What do I not have? What should I order? I make a list of the things that I need to order in order to meet my goals for canning. That's really what I wrap my head around for gardening is what do I need to can? And I just work myself backwards. So I made myself a list of all of the things that me and my family like to eat throughout the winter months and what I need to preserve and put up in our pantry. And so that's what this list is. And I go through and I say, okay, my family really loves to eat green beans. And I go through and I say, well, how many green beans do we really eat? We probably eat about a quart of green beans a week at least. So I need at minimum 50 quarts of green beans canned if I'm gonna do a year's supply of food in my pantry. Now that is my goal this year is I'm really trying hard to get a year's supply of food put up. If it doesn't happen, that's okay, but that's what I'm shooting for. And then I just kind of went down the line. I've got potatoes, sweet potatoes, sauerkraut, dill pickles, bread and butter pickles, because I didn't can any pickles last year. I had pickles from the season before that needed to get eaten up, and now we've only got about one, maybe two quarts of pickles left, so it's time to do that again. So I just did that through the whole list of things that my family likes to consume and kind of gave myself a general idea on how many quarts or pints or even half pints, depending on what it is, that I needed to put up. And that gave me an idea on, okay, well, if I need this many quarts, this is about how much tomatoes it takes in order to can one quart of tomato juice. And that's kind of how I do my math on how many plants I need. So I just work backwards from what I want to eat to what I need to grow. And then I look at my list of seeds that I already have, then I know what I need to order. And so then I write down a list of things that I need to order, and I go to some of my favorite seed suppliers, and I build a cart, and then I compare prices. I do think that it matters the quality of seed over the cost of the seed. I will pay more if I know the germination rate is there. But that's why I've narrowed it down to just a few seed companies that I really, really like to work with because I trust their germination rate. And Haas is my absolute favorite supplier because I have such success with their germination. So my first choice typically is Haas or Johnny C. Now this year I was on a little bit more of a budget in botanical interests which is also a very highly rated seed company. I've never used them before, but there was a lot of positive reviews, so I felt pretty good about them. They had a really big sale, and I don't remember exactly what the sale was, but it was like 60 or 70% off select seeds. And I just couldn't turn that down being on the budget that I was. So I did place a lot of my seed order with Botanical Interest, but I also ordered from um, Haas. I didn't order anything from Johnny's this year because the varieties that I needed from Johnny's already had enough seed on hand. So I just didn't have to order from them. But that's kind of how I make my list on what I need to order. And then from there, I just go off of the seed packet recommendation for when I need to start those seeds inside and then I just map it out and it's as simple as that. So I'm gonna just show you a quick graphic of what I plan to start for my vegetables and then when I get ready to actually seed start, 
I will bring you along for that process and I will show you my seed start setup, how I seed start, how I keep it frugal, and all of the things involved with seed starting. But that's as simple as it is. I just start backwards at what I wanna eat and then I know how much I need to grow and then I know what I need to order based on what I already have and what I don't have. So I hope that that made this a little bit more simplified for you. And if you're thinking about starting your own seeds for the first time, I would strongly encourage you to do it. It's so much more cost effective this way and it's a lot of fun. I'm going to get back to getting all of my seeds started for this week and I will catch y'all in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching.